in this video, we are going to talk about how we get internet on the road and how you too can get internet on the road without being tech savvy and without spending a fortune. So the biggest question that we get is how do we get mobile internet while traveling and what is the best mobile internet setup available on the market so stay tuned and we will let you know let's roll the intro we are charity ben dakota and trinity we decided we didn't want to wait for a life of adventure so in 2017 we bought our first rv and set off to live a life of travel in the usa We've visited over 38 states in three years and have many more to go. Follow along to learn all the best places to see, RV and travel tips, and much more. So some people want to RV and camp because they actually want to get away from it all and unplug. And if that is you, then you can just skip this video and go on to the next one. But if you want to know how to stay connected while you're on the road, this video is for you. So if you've been around RV life for any period of time, you've probably gotten bombarded with all kinds of information as far as antennas, hotspots, Nemo antennas, different boosters, and just bombarded with all types of different information when it comes to mobile internet. So the question is, what do you really need? Because if you're like us, you probably don't need all of that stuff. So we're gonna talk about that and kind of answer that question on what this might look like for you. But first, we want to take a little trip down memory lane to our very first time we ever went out in our RV. And we didn't know what we didn't know. But what we did know was that the campground that we were going to be camping at said that they had Wi-Fi. So we figured- Free Wi-Fi. Perfect. The campground has Wi-Fi. We'll connect to the Wi-Fi when we get there. No problem. We'll have what we need. Didn't work out that way. That very first campground we ever stayed at was actually sharing Wi-Fi with the casino next door. And let me tell you, it just did not work out so well. And we burned through the data on our phones just like that very, very quickly. And what we also learned was the very next campground we went to didn't have good Wi-Fi either, nor did the campground after that. Yeah. And so we learned very quickly and unfortunately, <laughs> We could not rely on campground Wi-Fi to keep us connected as we were living the RV life. So that precipitated a little bit of a journey to figure out the best solution for what we needed for internet. Everyone's going to have a different need for mobile internet. Our needs might be different than your needs and full-time RVers might be different than part-time RVers. So we are going to give you a resource that we've learned a ton from that we absolutely benefit from uh, membership from every year. And we're going to go ahead and give that to you in a minute. So unless that you're a digital nomad, meaning that you are actively working from the road or that you have a need for a lot of bandwidth or data usage, you probably don't need the big elaborate setup with the Wii Boost and all of the antennas on the roof that would make it look like that you're still in contact with your home planet. <laughs> you probably just need a very simple solution. And that is what we have is a very simple solution. So if you check out the Mobile Internet Resource Center at rvmobileinternet.com, we've got the link below for you. They can give you great options on different plans, different equipment that will fit what your needs are. There's a ton of videos on all of the fancy stuff. It can get confusing. Do yourself a favor go to them, check it out, and you'll be able to determine what you need for your particular situation and what it is you're doing and how you're choosing to live RV life. Yeah, in the resource, these guys eat, sleep, and breathe RV mobile internet. So they have in-depth tutorials and videos on every single subject that you'd ever need to know. So we're going to cover a broad spectrum that works for us and that might work for you. But if you want to dial into your specific situation, definitely recommend that you get a membership with RV mobile internet. So let's talk about the setup that we use. And 
as I mentioned earlier, we don't use a booster. We don't have some sort of big elaborate antenna set up on the roof of RV. No satellite dish. No satellite dish. No any sort of anything that would indicate that we're still in communication with our home planet. So our setup is actually very, very simple and it consists of three things. So number one, we have a Verizon jetpack that has a Verizon plan. Now, the plan that we have on this isn't available anymore, so it wouldn't really do us much good to talk about that. But there are lots of different data plans that you can get through Verizon. If you check out the Mobile Internet Resource Center, they can go over all of the different plans that Verizon has and what might be best for you and what your needs are. So this is our main device that we use for internet. Hey there, we wanted to interrupt this video real fast to just give you a couple of resources you don't want to miss out on. First is our free trip planner. So make sure that you go to gratefulglamper.com forward slash planner to download that free trip planner. Also, we have a ton of stuff over on our Patreon channel. We would love to have your support over on Patreon as well. And one last thing is we are getting started with Discord. So Discord is a great way for us to be able to just kind of keep in touch with you guys more often. So check that out at gratefulglamper.com forward slash Discord. Now back to the video. Number two, we wanted to have a backup option because for us, when we travel, we, need to upload 4k video to youtube for well, you guys and then and let's just tell them about why that we decided we needed a backup yes after you were in that back alley in page arizona behind some <laughs> coffee shop trying oh, to upload yes. a video yes when yes. our first device took a poop on us yep never again will i have only one device so basically what happened this was during the pandemic and everything uh so it, it may not happen to you out of the pandemic but <laughs> what happened was we had the latest jetpack device from verizon and it went out it completely failed and i could not get it working at all i uh, changed out the sim card i i did everything reset it it took a poop yeah took a poop so I went to try to get one online and guess what? They were not available online. I looked on eBay, Amazon, everywhere. Everybody wanted one, so they were gone. That left us without internet for a good couple weeks. So we had to rely on campground Wi-Fi and we we're in Page, Arizona, so. There's no Wi-Fi in Page, Arizona, none. just saying. None. Even at a coffee shop, you are not gonna get Wi-Fi in Page, Arizona. Yep, I was able to find a back alley in Page, Arizona, the only back alley with Wi-Fi in Page. And when I held my laptop right about here and I put my foot on the window, I was able to get internet. So I was able to upload that video for you. I hope you guys understand the stuff that we went through. You'll to have to go check video. out our video about Lake Powell in Page, Arizona, because we went to painstaking depths. To yes. get that uploaded yep so there were um questionable people like walking by me it was at <laughs> night i have my laptop in my hand and so uh needless to say i will never be without a backup device so what we decided to do is have a verizon service with the verizon MiFi. the second device i have is this travel data device and uh, this is a t-mobile service and they provide the wireless router and the service all in the subscription and i'll put a link down in the comments below to this particular plan that we're on and it's been great we use the verizon jetpack charity and i and then we let the kids uh, stream their YouTube and, and other stuff off of this device. So that way um, they're not taking up my bandwidth. We've got some redundancy in internet. 
The other thing with having two different devices on two different networks is that if you find yourself in a dead spot where maybe there's not Verizon coverage, chances are that there'll be T-Mobile coverage. Yep. And so that's one of the reasons that we wanted to have a completely different service with some sort of a backup device is because there can be dead zones with a particular carrier. Yeah. So having that backup device that has a completely different carrier for us is a must. It just expands the chances that you're not going to be without coverage in a given area. We're not big boondockers as far as like, I mean, we'll boondock at a Cracker Barrel. We're not going to be boondocking like out in the middle of nowhere. So to be in a place where there's not that cell signal even is very, very rare for us. So we know we're pretty much going to have coverage most anywhere we go by having both of those devices that have some sort of a cell service coverage. Yeah, Verizon's a pretty popular wireless provider. And sometimes the tower will be congested when there's an event or there's certain things going on in the area where a lot of people are hitting the tower. And I've had times where I couldn't get very good signal on here, very fast internet. And I turn this on and I had no problem because not a lot of people were actually using this tower with T-Mobile. So it's good to have the flexibility of two services if you can. And none of these typically have any contracts on them. So gone are the days where you're locked in for a year or two with the service provider. The great thing is, is that our monthly outgo for both of these devices is very inexpensive. We're spending less than $100 a month for our mobile internet. And so it's a perfect inexpensive solution for what we need. So option number three is we can always tether to our phones if we need to. We do have a certain amount of data that's on each of our phone plans. And so kind of as a potential last resort, if you will, if we need internet and for some reason one of the other devices isn't an option, we can always tether to our phone. Just keep in mind that a lot of plans that you're on with the phone do limit your data to a certain amount of uh, megabytes. So at that point they could throttle you and Verizon, when they do throttle you, they really throttle you. So just keep that in mind. AT&T is not as bad on the throttling, but it will slow down quite a bit after you reach that allowance per se. Now, when it comes to RV internet, probably the biggest piece of advice that we could give is to just keep it simple. You do not have to go with the big elaborate setups if you are not somebody that is just, you know, essentially broadcasting live TV from inside of your internet. You can do probably most everything that you need to do in RV life with a very simple setup. One thing that we have, again, very, very simple setup is we have this MIMO antenna. So our Verizon Jetpack, this plugs into this. If we are in an area where we feel like we have a little bit of a weak signal when it comes to cell service, plugging it into this and then just suction cupping this to whatever window in the RV is giving us just that little bit of a boost for signal can help with some increased speeds. So this is less than $60 on Amazon and we'll put a link below to that and then also to the Verizon Jetpack. But this whole particular setup costs under $300 for just the equipment. So very minimal cost to get started with mobile internet and you don't have to be a internet tech savvy person to be able to hook this up. So we'd love to know what questions you have about mobile RV internet. So feel free to leave your comments below and uh, ask the community and us what questions are on your mind. We'd love to respond to each of your questions. So just drop those in the comments below and we'll definitely get back to you. Also, make sure that you check out our free trip planning guide. It is trip planning season. So you can find that at gratefulglamper.com forward slash planner. It is a free template that we put together for you guys. So make sure that you take advantage of that free download on our website. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe and hit the bell if you are a new viewer. 
That way you get notified every time we release a new video. We have tons of super fun videos coming up, some videos by viewer request. So make sure that you've hit that little bell and then you just get that notification from YouTube that a new video has been released. Thanks for watching and until next time, we'll, we'll see, see you on, on the road. road.